The Minnesota Wild picked up a couple of big wins for their playoff chances last week as they beat the Florida Panthers and the Carolina Hurricanes to finish their three-game road trip at 2-1. and one. But it came at a price, again, as Connor Dewar now out of the lineup for a couple of weeks. We'll talk about replacing him as well as Kirill Kaprizov's heater and a familiar name back on the ice in Iowa. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Wild. We are your team every day. Your Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes or the largest growing comment section in the Locked On NHL channel. Today's episode of Locked On Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, Alex Micheletti joins us to recap a big win against the Carolina Hurricanes. We'll also talk about more injuries as Connor Dewar will be out of the lineup for a couple of weeks. So we'll talk about how to best replace him and a few other odds and ends to get to as well. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider credentialed member of the uh, Minnesota Wild media landscape and uh, joins today on a victory Micheletti Monday by Alex Micheletti. And Alex, I think if we were to like plot out the expected victory Mondays, um, I did not have today on my bingo card because the Carolina Hurricanes are an incredibly tough team. And yet... Here we are as the Wilds uh, came away with a 5-2 to two win to uh, complete a pretty critical road trip against very tough teams at 2-1. and one. Yeah, um, the Gus performance in the first period to, to keep that you know together. Brandon Duhame said it in his speech uh, after the game too. Uh, you know, without without the way Gus played in that first period, the game would have been totally over. So uh, kudos to Gus and uh, you know Krill just had a, an all world performance. Uh, so that's that's great to see. Um, so hopefully he keeps it going and you know has a Kirby Puckett like run here. Yeah, they're they're going to need both of those guys this week because you have three games I think you you have to have if you are if you're serious about getting back into the postseason picture these are the, the these are three games that fit the criteria of you just have to win them and so they're going to need Kirill they're going to need Philip Gustafson and the Wild are going to need to figure out what to do about their fourth line because as of right now Freddie Goudreau is out of the lineup and so we don't know his timetable so you have Pat Maroon playing up on the third line. Connor Dewar also out for a couple of weeks. And so you basically have Brandon Duhame and friends. And Adam Raska and Jake Lucchini played a combined 15 minutes against Carolina. And that may be good enough to win you a game. But I feel like they're going to need to figure something out that's more sustainable so that they can continue with that rolling four lines as opposed to rolling 10 guys. Yeah. Especially against, uh, you know, some, you know, playoff caliber teams, you know, this week they might be able to, to get away with it, like you said, but uh, they're going to have to, you know, figure something out to get, uh, you know, the, those, those rolling four, four lines that John Hines wants. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to get very interesting. Hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully flurry um isn't out too long either um so that you know we we don't want to see gus get overworked too um cuz yeah. i think that's where it uh you know especially when he's already um <laughs> kind of vulnerable with uh with injuries uh you know we don't don't want to have uh you know jared spurgeon type situation where then he's out for the for the season especially if they're trying to get back into this yeah that that's that would be an injury you can't afford to have and so 
it, it just like I, I tweeted it out over the weekend. I think it was uh, I think it was Friday during the Panthers game. I said I have never seen a team in which it seems like wins cost more than this wild team. Like Connor Dewar is somebody who is a pretty important piece to this team. And people may be listening to this saying, how can you say that about a fourth line center? But he plays a ton on the penalty kill. He is, he provides a speed element that there just is not a ton of on this team. And so I don't think replacing Dewar is as easy as let's put another guy in the lineup. Like you're losing a center, you're losing a speed guy. You're losing a guy who gives you an element on the penalty kill of scoring from a shorthanded perspective. Like there are a lot of holes that have to be filled with him, not in the lineup. Uh, and great chemistry with, with Brandon Duhame too, that, uh, you know, he loves playing with Connor Dewar. So that that's, that's really tough uh, to replace. Cause you just, you know, where guys are on the, you know, he knows where he is on the ice and, you know, playing with the, uh, you know, just completely brand new line mates. You know, I, I can't imagine for for Duhame. So, and uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully Dewar. You know, hopefully no setbacks, and you know, hopefully he can get back right right to how he was playing uh, right before the injury. Yeah, and it's it's a weird situation too because we like we know what the injury is by mm. how he fell, and so as opposed to the usual amount of smoke and mirrors that we get from an injury perspective, like pretty easy to pinpoint uh, that it's some sort of a hip injury based on how he fell. And so like that, that's not something that heals very quickly. No. And that's something that can linger if not dealt with properly. And so just, just another in a long line of injuries this year. It seems like every player almost with the exception of the two rookies, Marco Rossi and Brock Faber. And again, I knocked on my desk. Um, those are the only two guys that really have avoided injury so far this season. Jewel Erickson, another one, but beyond that, it seems like every other player has been out of the lineup for one thing or another this year, which is just at every key crazy. position too. Uh, it's <laughs> there hasn't been a position that hasn't avoided it. So yeah, what what is what is going on in Minnesota? Because it's it was the same thing for the Vikings. They they lost pretty much every notable player um, out of the mix at various points this season. It's just it's something going on. Some some curse that has been levied against uh, Minnesota teams in a long line of curses. But hopefully. Hopefully that is the extent of it. Although if we're being honest, it probably isn't. Um, but they're just going to have to, the wild are just going to have to continue with the next man up mentality or just more Kirill Kaprizov hat trick games. We'll talk about Kirill Kaprizov's heater as we continue today's episode of locked on wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, make sure that you join us for tomorrow's episode in which we'll take a look at the Washington Capitals. They're a weird team this season and so we'll uh, we'll take a look at exactly why that is and uh, who could potentially turn the game in the favor of the wild so stay tuned for that coming up tomorrow 
Seth Topol joined by Alex Micheletti today. And uh, Alex, another one of those games for Kirill Kaprizov, as you noted, uh, a hat trick for Kirill. And he's now got five goals in his last two games. Although his play has, I think, been very, very good over the last several games. It's just now that he is finally uh, getting noticed with some uh, with some goals. And so he carries a six goal December into a five goal January. And again, if this wild team is going to get back into the postseason picture, Kirill Kaprizov is uh, going to need to be the one leading the way. And every game that he does is just a game that uh, puts things in the favor of uh, the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, when he's when he's going like this, you know, you can see, you know, the energy it brings to the entire team. Uh, they, they just kind of, you know, took over there in the in the third period. Uh, you know, it was it was tilting uh, in, into the into the Wilds' favor, and uh, you know, it's uh, when he gets going. There's there's not many more um, you know players exciting than than Krill, um, you know, other you know, other than McDavid and McKinnon. Uh, it just it's so much fun to watch. Uh, um, Kirill, um, when, when he's, when he's scoring goals, like, like he did the, the, you know, spinorama goal, like when he turned around and, and that, that second one was just, was so impressive. And then, you know, to see him the, on the hat trick goal with a big block shot and, uh, you know, and then get it, uh, get it past, uh, you know, Brent Burns trying to, you know, stop it from, from going in from an empty netter. That was, that was impressive. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, you know, a game like that can can do wonders um, too, especially against you know a Carolina team that is is one of the best in in, uh, in the East. Um, you know their goaltending might you know it's it's very suspect, but I mean they they have one of the best power plays, um, and yeah. uh, you know they have some absolute studs up front uh, with Aho and Tara Vinen and Jarvis. You know the list goes on and on with 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 what they have up front, and then you know as we know, old friend Brent Burns still still getting it done, and Brady Shea and you know Jacob Slav- Slavin. So I mean they they're an impressive team. So it was it was a really nice nice way to end a road trip. Yeah, and uh, Kaprizov, just a couple of notes. 40th regular regular season hat trick in Minnesota Wild history. His third regular season hat trick, and he has 10 goals in the last 10 games. But as you noted, that was the thing that he talked about after the game was the block shot. And so adding to the mix, in addition to the goals, the other things. And yeah, don't look at the uh, underlying numbers from yesterday's game because uh, Carolina Hurricanes dominated the shots, shot attempts, time in the zone. But, uh, you know, that's that's what they do. And so the fact that the Wild were able to outlast that and get a couple of big performances is a huge reason as to uh, as to why they got the win. And, um, you know, the, the other part of this is just trying to get a little bit more out of Matt Boldy, because Mm -hmm. Kaprizov now starting to take the lead back. But if the Wilds can get him going again, that's when they can become a little more dangerous offensively, having two go to options. And we just we've seen kind of uneven performance from Boldy this year. But again, he is just 22, so he's still young in the league, but um, just would like to see a little bit more of that bulldog from Boldy here uh, to kind of complement what Kaprizov has done over these last handful of games. Yeah, it was a weird performance in the Carolina game for him. He whiffed on a couple of, of really um, prime op, uh, scoring opportunities. He was looking at a stick, um, but yeah, they, they're going to need, uh, you know, all the, all these other, you know, playoff teams have a, you know, a, a second stud that they go to that they lean on for, for scoring. And, you know, you, you take a look at you know, the Colorado's, the Dallas's of the world, you know, they have, you know, Colorado has more than just McKinnon. They have Ranton and they can go to McCarr and Dallas. They have Pavelski and Hintz and Duchesne. And so, and when Winnipeg, they have, you know, they, they look at their, their team is starting to merge with Velarde and Ehlers, you know, in a, on a superstar run and getting Kyle Connor 
back. And so this, you know, if, if the wild want to make noise, you know, they're going to have to run into those teams and, you know, if, if they do make the playoffs, you know, and they're in a wild card spot. So they're going to need Boldy in, in the worst way. And, um, you know, Zuccarello has been, has been stepping up, you know, he's starting to, to shoot the puck more, which, which is great to see, but if the wild are going to do anything, they're going to have to lean on, you know, Kaprizov and Boldy to, to get it done. Yeah, as as Lou Nanny said in the Friday game, he said just, you got to shoot more. And mm-hmm. I I just I love when uh, when Lou Nanny's in the booth because he just like he does not mince words. And there were there were 10 or 15 different times during that game where he's like, you he, he got to shoot like a guy would hold the puck. A wild player would hold the puck for a couple of seconds and he'd say, you, you got to put that on that. Yeah. And he's right. <laughs> like you, you can't score of goals. Sure. Yeah, you can't score goals if you don't send the puck to the net. And so I, I'm I just was glad that he sees what a lot of us are seeing in that there are some times in which this team just by and large is too perimeter heavy, too mm-hmm. pass heavy. Like throw a puck on net. You have plenty of guys that just default to getting to the front of the net. Rossi, Erickson Eck. Kirill is starting to do it more often again. Like just throw the puck on the net and it's probably going to be a save by the goalie most of the time. But in the event that it's not, you've got players that are there to be able to do something with it. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, you know, this team, you know, it, it historically hasn't had a ton of like skill up front. It's a lot of meat and potatoes types of goals. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, Zach Parisi did it for, for so long. And, uh, you know, Eck is kind of taking over that Parisi net, front, net, you know, front presence, just getting beat up there out, out front. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's how this team is, you know, is going to score goals. You know, it's, uh, like, like we always talk about a couple, you know, from a couple of years ago, that was just an aberration of, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it was a mirage of uh, how many goals were being scored by guys that normally don't don't, don't score 20, 25 yeah. plus goals. And so, uh, you know, this team is going to gonna win by getting getting the greasy goals and uh, creating screens out front like Eck always does. And, uh, and just just being hungry and, uh, you know, wear wear down teams. That's 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 how the wild win. Yeah. Pucks in deep. Pucks mm-hmm. on net. Every every cliche, like just do mm-hmm. it, and uh, it'll usually lead to some good things. And speaking of good things, a familiar face took the ice for the Iowa Wilds this weekend. We'll talk about the return of Mason Shaw to the ice after yet another ACL surgery. Uh, we'll finish with a couple of other odds and ends, including Patrick Waugh back in the NHL behind the bench. All that and more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Wild. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is also brought to you by FanDuel, official sports book of Locked on. And with the NFL playoffs in full swing, there is still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. FanDuel is incredibly easy to use, featuring same-game parlays. You can go in and put a second period over on the uh, Minnesota Wild against the Washington Capitals tomorrow night. You can bet the entire game under. There are no shortage of options for you to choose from at FanDuel. You can also find bets in the Explore tab, and put together an unbeatable parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find the most popular parlays. Some of my favorites include the anytime goal scorer, and if you chose Kirill Kaprizov yesterday, you paid off big. If you chose Jewel Eriksson Ek, that also paid off. And uh, so you can just, again, $5 is all it takes, and that's win or lose with any particular bet. And you'll get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. So head to fanduel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. 
Seth Topol joined by Alex Micheletti here for a victory Micheletti Monday. And uh, Alex, Mason Shaw back on the ice for the Iowa Wild this weekend. Uh, another long road back from another ACL surgery, but that's nothing new to Mason. He's dealt with four of them. And so um, getting an opportunity to get back on the ice was great for him. Great for Wild fans. And I, I talked about this in the postcast last night. It's really hard to root against the work ethic that Mason brings because most players would have one of these and be like, I'm, I'm done. Or they would have one. They would try to come back. And when they had the second, then at that point, they'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. This is four now. And he just every time it happens, he just gets back up and is like, "Okay, let's do it. Let's let's get through this workout. Let's get through this rehab and uh, let's get back on the ice. Yeah, it's inspiring. No, no matter what you do, you can if you can compare it to our regular regular lives. Um, but, you know, you know, to you know, to go through that grueling rehab process four times now, I I I, I couldn't even uh, imagine. And, uh, you know, it shows you know, how much he loves the game and how much it, it means to him and, and his family. Um, I saw an interview with, uh, um, with him, uh, from Iowa and, you know, he, he mentioned that, that it's not only him going through the process, but, you know, the people that are around him supporting him, you know, his parents, he talked about, which I, which I thought was, was really nice to see too, because, um, you, you need, you need that positive, uh, you know, vibes from, from people around you go to go through it for four different times. And, uh, you know, uh, it just, uh, you know, he, he mentioned to how, uh, you know, he's not taking anything for granted, which, you know, it just, you know, it's just, it's so, so inspiring and someone that he was easily, you know, easily rooting for, uh, I, I, how can you, how can you not? Um, and, uh, you know, he's such, such a nice, nice guy too. And, uh, you know, we hope, uh, you know, he gets another chance in, in the NHL and, uh, you know, I, I'm sure he's going to take full advantage of that if, you know, if he, if he does get that chance, but just to be able to, to skate and, you know, be with the guys is, you know, you know, he, he talked about, you know, he, he came to Iowa as a 19 year old and now he's 25. And so it's been, you know, quite, quite, quite the journey for, for him from, you know, from his junior days, you know, and now, you know, just full circle going, going back to, to where he started. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's probably going to be a long, long process, but uh, the fact that, you know, he's one level right below the NHL that, that that's that's saying something because they're you know the organization you know they 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 truly love the guy and so yeah they didn't they didn't have to give him another chance um and uh you know they're giving him this opportunity and i think he's gonna run with it yeah and i'll i'll just rehash because i know there were a lot of people that asked last night and there may be people listening that did not hear last night's postcast but as michael russo laid it out um, he is signed to an AHL deal right now. The Wild do have room now that the, uh, Jared Spurgeon has been placed on long-term injured reserve and is done for the season. They do have room if they would want to call him up at some point. But what they would need to do is sign him to an NHL contract, which they could do. But the deadline to do so is March 8th. So the Wild have some time to make a decision. But in order to get him on the NHL roster, they would need to shred that current deal, sign him to an NHL deal. And uh, then at that point, it would uh, it would be well within their rights to do so. Yeah, it gives him, you know, a couple of weeks to, to see where he, where he's at with his skating and to because that that's the biggest thing is if you can't uh, if you can't skate at an NHL level, they they won't uh, they won't change that deal so you yeah. have to you have to see what what you know i know he has to get in shape too but you have to you have to see where he's at because you know you don't want to throw him you know what if they play colorado <laughs> to, to see him try to skate against nathan mckinnon so you know you, you need you need to see where his where his legs are and you know give him a couple weeks so that's good they have about you know a month or so um and with the ahl as we know their their schedule is so goofy you know they have a lot of three and threes where they play a team three straight days which i i, I can't 
<laughs> I couldn't imagine, you know, in, in the regular season and that's, you know, but that's what they, what they do in that, that league and, you know, bus trips. And so it's, it's, it's a grueling uh, process, but, you know, it gives him, uh, you know, opportunity to, you know, to get uh, his legs underneath them. So we'll see, um, see how, it, how, it, you know, the, the biggest thing too is, um, you know, seeing how he does after games uh, yeah. too and, and that recovery especially the first Especially the first few, mm-hmm. like to see how he responds right. to getting out there on the ice for extended minutes. Like that's the key. It, mm-hmm. That's the next step in the process is just kind of seeing how his body treats it. Um, after those games. So we'll, we'll be keeping a close eye there. We'll also be keeping a close eye on the reports, Alex, that um, the wild are in the hunt for a defenseman. Uh, this was brought up by, uh, by Russo as well. Is that with Spurgeon being out for the rest of the season, uh, they're looking for somebody to come in that could be a potential top four defenseman without having to give up a ton and I got to say, considering those parameters, <laughs> I don't know what you're going to be able to find. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, Calgary and uh, and Arizona do have some intriguing options, but, uh, you know, they're they're in the hunt for the for a playoff spot. And yeah, do you really want to call call up? you know, Mike Greer in San Jose and, and try to get any of their defensemen or same thing with Verbeek and in, in Anaheim. I know, you know, Bill Guerin just, you know, dealt with uh, Verbeek recently with, with John Klingberg and that, in that trade, but you know, that, that didn't really work out for the wild too well. So, I mean, those are the, those are the types of teams that, you, you know, you'd be calling up um, <laughs> and it just, you know, it's like, that's kind of just like, uh Oh, you know, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, you know, I'm, I, 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 I like, I like some of the Calgary options, you know, just as like rentals, uh, you know, Chris Tanev or Noah, Noah Hannafin, if they, if they truly don't see themselves as a, as a playoff uh, team, you know, try to see. And then old, old friend, Matt Dumba, I know, you know, people have been clamoring for, for that um, as well. Um, you know, he's going to be a, a free agent. Um, so, you know, you're, you're basically looking at, you know, guys for, for rentals, um, you know, yeah. that, that you aren't going to be able to, to get, get them long, long term. So, you know, those are, you know, some of the options that you know, I was, you know, was taking a look at. Um, I should, I'll throw this out there, but I should also mention that I am not sure. And I'm frantically trying to scan before I say it. I'm not sure what his contract situation is, but knowing exactly what the wild are looking for size for a defenseman, keep an eye on the name, Eric Goodbranson Mm -hmm. from the Columbus blue jackets. He's six, five two twenty two. He is uh, 32 years old. He fits the exact profile that this team would be looking for, for a, uh, bigger defenseman. Again, I have nothing to go off of there, but just tri- strictly looking at defensemen on bad teams that are <laughs> right. big, like keep an eye on that name. He's had a good um, season too. So for, yeah. you know, for a team that's really struggling, uh, um, you know, he's a guy that uh, um, sticks up for teammates too. And uh, you know, he's the prototypical um, playoff defenseman to this, you know, that doesn't take any crap and uh, you know, is um, a, a minute cruncher too. He, he can play a, a lot of minutes. And so that's, you know, exactly um, he's kind of uh, uh, a little bit of an upgrade from Bogosian, um, I, I would say. So um, yeah, that's you know, that that would be a perfect fit for sure. Wouldn't that be something if that's the route that they go? <laughs> and I literally just am basing it off of like a cookie cutter right. formula for what to expect. So we'll see. But uh, Alex, we're glad to have you back in the fold because I know yep. it was a tough weekend for you. Mm-hmm. Um just always, always unfortunate in those types of situations to uh, mm-hmm. to lose a pet. But uh, I'll let you kind of talk more about that. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, you know, dedicate this episode to my my dog Lacey, a, a big part of my life for you know eleven years, and so I just wanted to say uh, that this one's for her, and I really appreciate everybody that's reached out to me. Um, yeah, it was really, really, really tough weekend. And so, um, yeah, I appreciate everybody that, you know, comments here on, on locked on and, uh, was sending me messages. 
on, on Twitter, it, it means means the world to me. So yeah, I, I appreciate it, and I appreciate you so much too, Seth. Yep, my uh, my pleasure. I, I saw I saw the tribute on Twitter, and I was like, mm-hmm. let's uh, let's make sure he's doing all right. Yeah. So always Thank a you. tough situation, but mm-hmm. uh, you know that's. That's part of the uh, the great journey of life that mm-hmm. we uh, that we are all going through. So mm-hmm. that is going to wrap it for today's episode. Again, thank you everybody for tuning in to today's episode of Locked On Wild. Make sure to hit the like button on your way out, and make sure to subscribe to Locked On Wild as well, so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week, and also so you don't miss out on the w- uh, largest growing comment section in the Locked On NHL channel. Uh, if you would like to be a guest participant on Locked on Wild, send us an email at LockedOnWild at gmail.com. All of that info is in the description of today's episode, so uh, we'll get those rolling here this week. So uh, again, just send us an email. Let us know you would like to be a guest participant, and we'll get things arranged from there. Uh, you can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.